what are some of the best ways to become a better actor aside from being the perpetual student in these classes that I know are beneficial, Right. but you're right, people can get stuck in that. Right. And there's always also about classes. You want to be careful of the teacher as guru. Like you know, that. you really have to be watchful for that because a lot of times there are many classes in which the teach it's more about the teacher and the student's adulation of that teacher than it is about the students, you know. So um, the way to become a better actor is to act, is to get on stage as much as you possibly can. And don't let any of this New York versus Los Angeles theater thing dissuade you because I've seen brilliant shows and stinkers on big, in big houses and small on both coasts. So you just have to do it. Actors act. If you sit around your house and you get a play reading together with other actors that you know and you just read and then you celebrate afterwards, right. you do that. You have to do it, you know, because um, not, and interacting with other people is just social interaction with other people. Very important, I think. And being a not self-absorbed person is very important because you learn things from every experience, you know, being out in the world, watching the way people move in the world, listening to the sounds of their voices and the funny little ticks they have and the things they do. It's all about incorporating something real into this fictional moment that you're creating on the stage. And the more reality you can bring to it, the better you'll, you'll be. And here's one thing, a tip that I have found to be invaluable. And I learned this very early on. Um, my mother was also my, my coach because she was a fab. And when I was doing Shakespeare, I was with the Colorado Shakespeare Festival for a few seasons when I was a kid. And um, she was getting her master's there at Boulder. And so um, I had to audition for everything. Uh, you know, she wasn't directing them, but I had to audition for everything. And I had a, I like language, so I had a, 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 a proclivity for verse. And um, so, but there were times when the verse, I didn't, you know, I was nine. And so I didn't quite know, it didn't fit in my mouth quite right. So what I learned was to put in my head the, well, it just doesn't work with verse so much, but it helps with interpretation of anything. And in regular language, this really works. If there's a line that, you, that doesn't fit in your mouth well, you know, rephrase that in your head the way you would say those, that concept and then impose that rhythm onto the sentence that you're given. So, um, uh, I wish I could have a facile example right now, but if it's something as simple as, you know, uh, I want you to go to the store and buy some celery and, and that doesn't make sense to you, in your head you go, uh, you know, we need celery. And then you go, I want you to go to the store and buy some celery. So you say it with the music of the rewrite that you put in your head. So you impose the music of the rewrite on the line that doesn't fit in your mouth. And it really works. I like that. Does that make sense yeah, to you? Yeah, it sure does. It sure does because a lot of times maybe you'll yeah, there'll, yeah, there'll be something that you wouldn't normally say, but if you put it in your voice, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I, I can't really articulate what it is. You put the music of your mm -hmm. voice. Not, you don't put it in your words. Right. You put it in the music that accompanies your words. You know, so you're superimposing the sound of, you know, we could use some celery on. I want you to go to the store and get some celery, instead of I want you to go to the store and get some celery, or wh whatever, whatever. I, that's a very silly example, but, but it's the concept of the tone right. imposed on the words that don't fit in your mouth. Make the concept fit in your head and then put the music of that over the words that don't fit. Right, so if you say things with maybe an inflection at the end or with a question or something, or maybe you're more, uh, it's more of a directive, whatever way you're normally sort of speaking to someone, it, it, let's suppose in that context, right? You, you do it and then try to fit that sentence in. Yeah, you put the okay. sound of that sentence over the words that don't fit. Because I'm every actor, 
has gotten a line that <laughs> I would never say this and this is not I can't make this real how do I make this real so you you make it you you reinterpret that sentence into your own words and then hear how that sounds in your head and put the sound of that on the words that don't fit and it, it always it's it always worked for me and when I've given it as advice to others they said you know I like that 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 really helps because it personalizes it it's like it makes it real right listening to the tones of others and that sort of thing so listen to your own tones too and have them help you right.